In the heart of the Kimberley, in one of the most beautiful and wildest regions of Australia, lives Ombi, a young Aborigine from the Kija tribe. Aborigines consider children's dreams to be messages about the future sent by the spirits. Old Jerry captures and interprets dreams for the tribe. He is going to help the youngster to understand his dream. Ombi is 13, the age of initiation. He must accomplish a series of tasks which will establish his position within the clan. The dream determines the direction of his initiation. Jerry explains its significance by recounting the legend of Juwudu. In the beginning, long before man existed, a time the Aborigines call the dream time, animals ruled the earth. They were immortal. Juwudu, the crocodile, fell in love with Nambian, the black-headed snake. He wanted to marry her, but the other animals were violently against it. Filled with rage, the great ancestral crocodile, the most powerful animal on earth, decided to seek revenge. He condemned all the other animals to mortality. Only he remained immortal and would return during the nights of the full moon to devour the others. After having pronounced his curse, he left for the moon, where his spirit lives on. The dream signifies that Ombi is destined to protect mortals from Juwudu, but he must, above all, protect himself. That is why he will leave in search of a crocodile and kill him. Ombi is still too young to challenge a great ancestral crocodile. Old Jerry explains that a member of the tribe is going to initiate him, teach him to live in the bush, teach him the secrets of the crocodile, to love the animal, but also to confront him. Very few men are granted this privilege. Ombi is the chosen one. It is he who must defend both animals and men from Juwudu's terrible rage. Noel, the initiator, and Ombi leave from Wagaban. They will cross the sacred mountains of Bungal Bungal and then the plains of Nugurabur. They will go to the estuaries where the great marine crocodiles live. They will follow an itinerary sacred to the Kijas. The trail Juwudu, the great ancestral crocodile, followed as he left the interior of Australia and slowly headed for the sea, chewing up the earth on his way. Accompanied by Noel, Ombi must go where Juwudu went, since each of the animal steps created a part of the world. They take nothing with them on the journey, and only Noel wears a naga, the loincloth of the initiated.
The Kimberley, the land of the Kijas in the northwest of the Australian continent, is still almost deserted, since in spite of its great beauty, living conditions are extremely difficult. Beyond this immense plain with its thousands of birds are crocodile swamps, a universe filled with mystery for the young boy. Noel draws protective symbols on Ambi's body with white clay called oka, which is sacred to the Aborigines. This precious earth is gathered by the women at the surface of the dried lakes. The initiation of young boys enables the Kijas to renew ties with their nomadic past. Like all Aborigines, the Kijas eat only what they hunt and gather. Every morning during this long journey, Noel and Ombi pray that they will find animals and plants on their path. Thus, there will be no shortage of food. The universe always answers their silent request. The lands they go through are sacred to the tribe. Ombi must learn to know and respect them, since this is where the spirit of every Kija returns after his death. The earth they tread on consists of the dust of their ancestors. Aborigines believe that beings do not die, but are transformed. At the entrance to this plain, Ombi discovers the heritage of the Aborigines, a 50,000-year history. When the earth was still flat, an immense canopy floated in the sky. A bright heavenly body resembling a comet fell from the firmament. The earth was enveloped in darkness. The terrified birds gathered together by the thousands. From this night, came the people of the initiated, Ombi's people. Noel teaches Ombi how to recognize a plant with an edible root and how to pick it without tearing it out of the ground. He must first ask the plant if it is willing to fulfill its role of providing nourishment, and he must never pick more than he needs. If he uproots a plant before it reaches maturity, he must replant it. The Kijas do not plant or harvest anything. They search the bush, knowing that every day they will find what they need to nourish themselves. The Indo-Pacific crocodile found on the northern coast of Australia adapts very well to both freshwater and saltwater. It follows rivers for long distances. Very few men dare to cross over. To reassure Ambi, Noel tells him the old Kija belief that if you don't think about a crocodile, he won't attack you. Noel explains to Ambi that this giant tree is known throughout the entire region as the prison tree. In the past, cattle thieves were chained to it. For the Kijas, however, when it loses its leaves in winter, with its branches resembling roots, it is the tree that Juwudu, the great ancestral crocodile, planted upside down.
The fruit of the tree is very precious. One nut is enough for an entire day. It can be eaten raw, although it is better when it's cooked. The Kijas eat when they find nourishment, regardless of the time of day. Hey, Terrence, look, look. What? Two emu. Baby emu. Come here, come here. Give him some seed to my ketchup. Go. Since Ombi has been designated to protect the animals, he must learn to know and love all those who live in his territory. The emu is a big, powerful bird that doesn't fly. He lives far from all human presence. As he goes through the high grass with his long feathers, he gathers seeds and deposits them further along the way. He thus guarantees a natural seeding. That is why for the Aborigines, he is the totemic emblem of fertility. For these young emus, this is probably their first contact with man. Noel teaches Ombi the gestures of their nomadic ancestors. If there is no cave nearby, the youngster must erect a witcha, the traditional shelter. Although most Aborigines today are sedentary and live in villages, the simple gestures they pass down keep their history alive. Some tribes, like the Kijas, use telepathy to communicate with each other across the immense plains. Only the pure in spirit, however, can let their thoughts out. During his initiation, Ombi must learn to hide nothing in order to transmit and receive messages. The hunt has been a success. Ombi has proven his ability, and thanks to Noel's advice, he has killed his first Varanus, a large lizard. Now it's time to eat the best part, the tail. At dawn, after many days of traveling, Ombi finally discovers and marvels at the estuaries where the big marine crocodiles live. It is truly a magical moment which makes all his efforts worthwhile. Noel has just found a crocodile nest. He warns Ombi to be very careful as he gets closer. Until the eggs have hatched, the mother stays nearby to protect them. This nest mound must be empty. If not, the mother would attack violently. Noel discovers one abandoned baby. 
The newborn sometimes remain imprisoned underneath because they are too weak to leave the nest. There is even a second newborn who was unable to leave his shell. If Noel had not set them free, they would certainly have died. This doesn't mean that their lives have been saved. Of the 60 or so babies in each nest, only two or three reach adulthood. The mother looks after them, but there are a great many predators. <laughs> Still, the longevity of the species, 200 million years, proves how well it can adapt. This is perhaps why the Kijas think the crocodile is immortal. On the red earth of the Kimberley, Noel and Ombi run into a legendary animal, Nambian, the black-headed snake Juwudu wanted to marry and who is at the root of the discord between the crocodile and the other animals. Noel has spotted a crocodile. He signals to Ombi to keep his distance. The animal is at least two meters long and very dangerous. It's hard to kill a crocodile because his brain, as big as a walnut, is protected by two centimeters of bone. This is why Noel holds him under the water until he drowns. The combat can go on for several hours. The spear must enter at a precise spot at the base of the skull so as not to destroy the crocodile's soul. Noel has explained to Ombi that it's not wrong to kill a crocodile, since for the Kijas, life is an endless cycle. Present for you. Okay? For your man, it's your present. It's for you. Okay, that's for you, you look after it, treasure it. This one, your honey spear. You go kill a croc. You know why I kill that other croc? Yeah. You go tomorrow, kill a croc, you bring him back to me. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And check Go straight. <coughs> Hard. <coughs> The dead crocodile must be shared with all the Kijas. 
The women make certain the preparations follow the tribal tradition. The crocodile is buried under ashes. Then a big fire is lit from above. Cooking time is at least five hours. The animal is cut up according to a specific ritual in order to free his immortal soul, which will return to the moon, where perhaps one of the baby crocodiles Ambi and Noel saved is waiting. Tonight is the eve of Ambi's final test. He must eat crocodile flesh to strengthen him for the confrontation. More than just a meal, this sharing symbolizes the tribe's unity. The Aborigines believe that the heart was made for speaking and not the voice. The voice is for singing celebrating and healing. Tonight they sing songs celebrating the immortal soul of the crocodile who watches from the moon to make certain the world continues its eternal cycle. Noel has shown Ambi how to kill a crocodile, but without the dance of Juwudu, which the women show him, Ambi would not be able to go and hunt alone. This dance has the power to bewitch the crocodile's spirit. Thunder. Tomorrow, Ambi must begin the same journey alone that he made with Noel, retracing Juwudu's steps. Killing a crocodile is his final test. It will fulfill his dream and make him one of the initiated. The spirits of the children, scattered like seeds by the dream, will give birth to a name and a song that will enrich the Earth's memory. If Ambi is victorious, according to tradition, he must choose a new name for himself.
Bombi has succeeded. He has shown that he can contribute to the life of the universe by using his unique gift, doing combat with the crocodile to save all other animals. The earth will nourish and strengthen him, but he must never stray far from it. If he does, it will cut him off from his tribe and from the dream time.